Rob is the Vice President of Communications at the Heritage Foundation. He's Executive Editor of the Daily Signal. And most importantly, for my purposes, he is Keeper of the Christmas Party Invitation List. Now, I have never been invited to the Heritage Foundation's Christmas Party, and it's because Rob Bluey holds that list close and he won't put me on it. So I'm starting the Heritage Hour, which is about policy and going forward and constitutional issues and big issues, big thoughts, by asking abjectly, Rob, can I come to the Christmas party? <laughs> Hugh, you can absolutely come to the Christmas party. It is a pleasure to be with you, and we're, uh, we're very grateful uh, to be uh, debuting the Heritage Hour on your show. What? Let's, let's assume that the Steelers fans are dialed in. They know what a Christmas party is, and they know I've been banned from it. But they do not know necessarily what the Heritage Foundation is, even though it is the giant among giants. It is the mothership of conservatism and has been since Ronald Reagan took office. What is the Heritage Foundation? Well, that's that's right, Hugh. Uh, For almost 50 years, the Heritage Foundation has been in the business of promoting policies that make Americans' lives better. We believe that conservative solutions lead to better outcomes for families, for individuals, for businesses. And we are in the business of taking the principles of conservatism and turning them into good public policies at the federal level, at the state level, and most recently, uh, working with local officials as we try to get our country reopened again after uh, this COVID-19 epidemic. Now, Rob Bluey, when I first came to Washington in 1981 as a summer associate for Baker and Botts, and then I came back in 1983 to Clerk and then into the Reagan administration, the Heritage Foundation was well known for its policy briefs. Everywhere you went, there were these Heritage Foundation, one or two pagers at most, on key issues that Ronald Reagan was advancing in the beginning of the Reagan era. Since that time, everything has changed about how to communicate ideas and influence Congress. How has Heritage changed with it? Well, you better believe it. Uh, You know, back in those days, we used to call it the briefcase test. And it was uh, Heritage who came up with this idea that you didn't need a large book to make a policy decision. You needed a timely and relevant research paper. uh, And and oftentimes we'd get it into the member of Congress's hands as they would be going to Reagan Airport. But we wanted them to finish that brief by the time they got to the airport so they can make their decision. Obviously, today, Hugh, it's very different. I mean, so much is done online and digitally and through tweets and videos. So Heritage has had to adapt, and uh, we've had new additions like Heritage Action for America, which is our our 501c4 lobbying arm. So we have a a grassroots uh, sentinel uh, army that's out there advocating for these policies. And so much has, uh, has, has changed, as you say, including the addition of the Daily Signal, because we felt that it was important to have our own news organization to get our message out and not just rely on those in the mainstream media, which, as we've seen in recent days, can certainly uh, you know, take its, uh, its course. Look at what happened uh, just to your recent guest, uh, Tom Cotton, uh, when he tried to do an op-ed in the New York Times. We wanted to have our own outlet where we could get our message out. Now, I want people to write this down, Hugh4Heritage.com. Q4Heritage.com. If you listen to this show and you hear the Heritage Hour, you're going to say, I want some follow-up. When you go to Q4Heritage.com, you give them your email, and then they will get what, Rob Bluey? Well, today we are offering them free a chapter from our new Mandate 2020 book. So Heritage, as you mentioned, got its influence really in 1981 when Ronald Reagan decided to give mandate for leadership to all of his cabinet secretaries and said, You will be graded on your performance based on how you implement the policies outlined in this book. And every four years since then, the Heritage Foundation has produced the mandate for leadership. This year, Mandate 2020 is out early. We wanted to make sure that we were influencing the debate now ahead of the November election and making sure that uh, those policies got into the hands of the American people. So your listeners can go to HughForHeritage.com and download a free chapter today. And I'm talking with Rob Louie, who is the uh, vice president of comms over at Heritage Foundation. Uh, Rob, what is the Daily Signal? Because while I want people to go to HughForHeritage.com, I also want them to become familiar as I am with the Daily Signal. Well, the Daily Signal was started six years ago because the Heritage Foundation was frustrated by the fact that we couldn't necessarily have the same kind of success getting onto the mainstream programs as we once did or into the op-ed pages. As newspapers changed and started to limit the voices that were out there, particularly among conservatives, we said we need to create our own outlet where Heritage Foundation research experts can produce and write their own op-eds. Plus, we we added a news team. So we had to create our own news, investigative reporting, documentary videos, 
uh, coverage of the day's top issues. And so every morning, your listeners can also sign up for the Morning Bell, which delivers to their inbox early in the morning with the day's top news and analysis from Heritage Foundation experts. You can sign up uh, for that as well. Uh, HughForHeritage.com is, is the address, and DailySignal.com is where you can find all the latest news. Now, Rob, I'll be talking with the president of the Heritage Foundation at the bottom of the hour, Kay James. What is your story? How did you end up atop the Christmas card list, the Christmas party invitation list, the Daily Signal, and head of comms at the Heritage Foundation? Well, we, we need to take care of that. <laughs> that immediately, Hugh. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in upstate New York uh, as a conservative. I uh, got my start in high school working in journalism and really aspired to come to Washington, D.C. And, and do political reporting. My dream was to always work for a place like the Washington Post. But I quickly realized, I think through my college experience at a very liberal campus, and then once I got involved in the conservative movement and worked at an organization like CNS News and, and later Human Events, uh, that that's where you could really have the biggest impact and make a difference. And so when I started at the Heritage Foundation, one of my dreams was to do something like the Daily Signal. And so I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to help create the Daily Signal and now lead the communications team there. And I'll tell you, Hugh, it's, uh, it's a changing world, as you know. The media landscape is different every day, it seems, and there's a new challenge that hori- on the horizon. So uh, conservatives need to be paying attention, and we want to make sure that we're delivering the information to them directly. I have probably been giving Rob Louie a hard time since 2007, but I have to give him credit for this. In 2007, Rob convened. I think it may have been your first convening of bloggers, which is a term of art now that is no longer relevant as it was in 2007, that included the estimable Robert Novak and many others because you said the Heritage Foundation has to understand new media. And you've never given that up. And do you think that it's caught up at this point with every tool in the trade? Well, <laughs> you know, in those early bloggers briefings came at a time when we definitely recognized that we saw what the left was doing in terms of mobilizing uh, liberal bloggers. And so Heritage wanted to make sure we were providing that information and resource to conservative bloggers. Obviously, that's an area that's changed dramatically uh, over the course of those 13 years. But yes, Hugh, I, I do think that it's always Uh, it's always one of those things where we have to stay a step ahead. You're already seeing it in the younger generation. I I have two elementary school children of my own, and I'm already seeing how they're using uh, technology and to consume information. And and frankly, in this virtual world of schooling that we're now in, uh, you know, how much more important it is. And so I think for conservatives, as we look to the future, we need to be always making sure that we're communicating with that next generation because, you know, as uh, as that old saying goes, you know, that next generation is going to carry forward these principles and ideas into the future. We're seeing it now with some of these protests and the, the activism that young people have. I think we need to be giving them the ideas and the empowerment before opportunists on the other side attempt to co-opt what they're doing and try to advance their political agenda. Yeah, Rob Louie, the country is taunting itself to death. It's no longer about persuasion and argument. It's about taunting. The Heritage Foundation has always been an island of repose, a place where you get facts, whether in the Daily Signal, whether in the HughForHeritage.com sign up, certainly in Mandate 2020. I think what has distinguished the Heritage Foundation is its commitment to research and facts and accessibility. Am I right, wrong, or is it moving? No, you're absolutely right. I mean, we are very much uh, focused on, on the data and the facts. And I think that this recent situation with COVID-19 demonstrates exactly how we've been able to do that. And you can talk to certainly Kay James about this uh, in the interview. She's the chairman of our National Coronavirus Recovery Commission, which was very much an effort in terms of bringing together thought leaders from across the spectrum, public health, government, business community, and using data and information to make informed decisions. We saw an opportunity, Kay really back in March, saw an opportunity to put together a private sector commission that would move much faster than government in terms of delivering the recommendations and solutions. And a lot of those are based on data, as you said. Our Center for Data Analysis, for instance, did an outstanding map, county by county, of how uh, COVID cases were trending to give local leaders information to hopefully reopen their counties at a local level and not have it all top down. As as we we know, the government that's closest to you is the government that functions best. 